So Latin jazz, as the name implies, is jazz that uses rhythms derived from Latin American music. Now there are two main categories of Latin jazz. There's Afro-Cuban jazz, which is based on Cuban music with genres like the mambo, the cha-cha and the salsa. And there's Afro-Brazilian jazz, which is based on Brazilian music with genres like the bossa nova and the samba. Now this lesson will discuss only the former, that is Afro-Cuban jazz. And I'll leave the latter for another video. So some music genres have such a well-known and iconic groove or rhythmic pattern that they are instantly recognizable. For example, if I play this, you instantly know that you're about to hear a nice slow blues. Or if I play this, you instantly know that you're about to hear a boogie woogie. Now Afro-Cuban jazz is similar. It has a rhythmic pattern that is instantly recognizable as Afro-Cuban, which I'll go over in a moment. So then the most important aspect and the defining characteristic of all Afro-Cuban music is the rhythm. To play in an Afro-Cuban style means to adhere to a particular rhythm. Without this rhythm, Afro-Cuban jazz is just regular jazz. This rhythm is the thing that holds the whole song together and in fact the whole genre together. Now the rhythmic features that characterize traditional jazz are a swing rhythm and a backbeat, that is accents on beats two and four of each bar. Afro-Cuban jazz on the other hand is rhythmically different. It's played with a straight rhythm and adheres to a clave rhythm. Now in Afro-Cuban jazz, every instrument is allocated a particular rhythm which they must play throughout the entire song with little or no variation. And all these different rhythms kind of mesh and combine together to create an Afro-Cuban feel or groove. And the most important of these rhythms is the clave rhythm, which is played on an instrument called a clave, which are essentially just rhythm sticks. Now this clave rhythm is the bass rhythm of Afro-Cuban jazz. It's like the foundation of a house. All the other instruments are allocated a rhythmic pattern that complements and adds to this clave rhythm. So it's like building layers of different rhythms on top of your foundation clave rhythm. And so this creates a kind of rhythmic jigsaw puzzle where all the different rhythms fit in together and create a nice tight groove. Now it's really important to practice clapping and playing this clave rhythm so that you really internalize it. As I said before, it's just like with swing rhythm in traditional jazz. You really have to feel it and be comfortable with it and internalize it. So the clave is a two bar pattern that is repeated throughout the entire song. And there actually isn't a single universal clave. There are a number of different clave rhythms which are all quite similar but nevertheless distinct. Now there's the two three son clave which goes like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. So it has a bar with two notes, followed by a bar with three notes. And then there's the 3-2 song clave, which follows the exact same pattern, but with the bars reversed. So it's 1, 2, and 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, and 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right, so it's a bar with three notes, followed by a bar with two notes. Then there's the 2-3 rumba clave, which is very similar to the son clave, but just delays the last note of the three bar by half a beat. So it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and. And the 3-2 rumba clave just follows the same pattern, but again with the bars reversed. So. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four. Now, there are also other Latin jazz songs which follow a clave like rhythm, but are not exactly the same as the son or the rumba clave. Instead, they are just slight variations on it. 
For example, the song Chitlins con Carne is a Latin blues which follows a clave-like rhythm that goes as follows. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, and four. Right, so it hits the three and instead of the three in the two bar. So the term Latin jazz is somewhat flexible in that you can have a number of different clave-like patterns as your bass rhythm and still call it Latin jazz. But the son clave is by far the most common clave used today, so we will be discussing that one in this video. Now, once the clave is established, it does not change for the whole song, or at least for that section of the song. In fact, many Latin jazz standards have a Latin rhythm section A and a swing rhythm section B. So like On Green Dolphin Street, Con Alma and A Night in Tunisia. Now, the melody of a Latin jazz song should generally adhere to or follow this clave rhythm, so that 1, 2 and 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So in that sense, the melody of a Latin jazz song is a little bit rhythmically constrained. You sort of, you can't just play whatever the hell you want. You need to generally adhere to that basic pattern. And I'll try to do a separate video demonstrating this fact or how this works um, in the future, if and when I get the time. And so, as I said before, every other instrument is then allocated a rhythmic pattern that complements the clave rhythm that they play through the entire song. Now, a percussion instrument, so like a drum or the side of a drum, plays a rhythm called a cascara, which you can see up here. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and... Now notice how the cascara rhythm lines up and embellishes the basic clave rhythm. And this is what I mean when I say that all other instruments play rhythms that complement the foundation or the bass clave rhythm. So then you can add other percussion rhythms on top. So like the sensero rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or the cowbell rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or the conga rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right, so on top of our foundation clave rhythm, we've built multiple layers of more complex rhythms, and all together they create an Afro-Cuban Latin jazz feel. And these rhythms just repeat over and over again for the whole song. So each instrument's individual part is actually quite simple and even a little bit boring. But they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle and create a really great and interesting sound. Now as pianists, the two most important rhythms that we have are the montuno and the tumbao. Now the montuno goes... One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. And the tumbao rhythm goes... One, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. So, a montuno is essentially just a vamp. As the piano player, you just play that same rhythm again and again for the entire song, but outlining the chord progression. And Afro-Cuban bands are generally quite big and loud, with a number of horns and a bass and drums. So the montuno is generally played with two hands and doubled an octave apart to create a louder sound so that the piano doesn't get drowned out by all the other instruments. But if there is no bass player, then the piano is in charge of playing both the montuno in the right hand and the tumbao in the left hand. So again, you can think of all these patterns as a kind of rhythmic vamp. 
that's played through the entire song. And again, it's important that you practice and internalize these rhythms by clapping or playing them. They should become second nature and be entirely in your muscle memory. All right, good. So the Montuno is a rhythm, but what notes should you actually play? Now, the goal of the pianist is to outline the chords using that Montuno rhythm. Now, I'm going to play in a 2-3 clave, but the pattern is just reversed for a 3-2 clave. So then, there are two main ways of playing chords using this Montuno rhythm. First, you can just arpeggiate each chord, so play broken chords. And you should generally always start on the root note and play the chord in second inversion. So, for example, you could play a C6 using that Montuno rhythm as follows. Right, so we started on the root note, we're just outlining the C6 chord in second inversion, and we're just adhering to that Montuno rhythm. Or you could play C minor 6. an octave lower, or even a tenth lower if you like to kind of harmonize it. And you can play chord progressions like this. For example, let's just take a really simple chord progression of A minor 7 going to G7 and just repeating. Then you could play it like this. Right, so I'm just arpeggiating the A minor 7 chord and then arpeggiating the G7 chord and going back and forth. And now we can add the tumbao in the left hand. Now the tumbao is the bass part and just needs to play the chord tones, especially the root and the fifth, using that tumbao rhythm. So So the right hand is playing that Montuno pattern and just arpeggiating the chords, and the left hand is playing that Tumbao pattern and just playing the 1-5-1-5-1-5-1-5. One, five, one, five, one, five, one, five. And the Tumbao is slightly anticipating each chord, so it goes 1, 2, and 3, 4. On the 4 of the previous bar, we move to the next um, chord, which is that G7. But that's all written up here in the picture in picture if that wasn't clear to you. And secondly, instead of arpeggiating the chords, you can break the chord into two and play the Montuno pattern. So let's say we want to play a C major 7 chord. So we could break the chord up into the note C, an octave apart, and then the notes E and G. So we've broken the chord in two. And then we just play those combinations of notes um, using that Montuno pattern. Or similarly, we could begin on the third, an octave of E, and intersperse that with the G and the B. begin on the 5th, the G, and play the B and the E, or a B and D if you like, which gives you a C major 9, or again we could start on the 7th, the B, and play the E and the G in between. So again, let's take a nice easy chord progression of C major 7 going to F major 7 to G7 and back to F major 7, repeating. Right, 
so that was just a C major, going to an F major, going to a G7, or a G triad in this case, back to the F major. But again, using that Montuno pattern. Or similarly, you could do C minor 7 to F minor 7 to G7 back to F minor 7. Which again is C minor going to F minor, G, F minor, back to C. And again, we could just add that tumbao pattern in our left hand, just playing root notes. So again, to summarize, your right hand plays the Montuno pattern using broken chords, and your left hand just plays the tumbao pattern with roots and fifths. But again, that's just the basic Montuno. You can then embellish it by adding eighth notes to make it a little bit more interesting. So in a way, you're combining that first method of um, using the broken chords, or the arpeggios, with that second method of splitting the chord in two. But you're still keeping that general underlying basic Montuno feel or rhythm going um, by accenting the appropriate beats um, that correspond to the basic Montuno. So for example, you could play eighth notes at the start. Right, so instead of just playing the chord broken into two, I played a little arpeggio and then went back to that regular Montuno pattern. Similarly, you could play eighth notes at the end. Or you could play them at the beginning, at the end, and in the middle to create a little bit more of an interesting Montuno. So in Afro-Cuban jazz, the rhythmic aspect is more important than harmony or melody. So play rhythmically, play loud, and use lots of octaves. And you keep playing the exact same montuno and tumbao for the entire song, over and over again, just like a vamp. So unlike jazz piano comping, where varying your rhythm is important, in Afro-Cuban jazz, you shouldn't vary your rhythm very much at all, because the goal is to set up a really tight groove and just keep repeating it. And with all the other instruments playing their own rhythms, you get a really nice Afro-Cuban feel. And when it's time to solo, remember that rhythm is still more important than melody or harmony. You want to keep your solo nice and simple, use a lot of octaves and chords to make it loud so that you're heard over the rest of the band, and keep that clave and montuno rhythm going. As you can see, and as I keep repeating myself throughout this video, Afro-Cuban music is all about rhythm. In most Afro-Cuban music, the chords or the harmony is actually quite simple. They use pretty standard chord progressions and usually just use triads. So you're not going to find many Phrygian chords or polychords or heavily altered dominants or any other complex chords in Afro-Cuban music. And chord progressions are also generally pretty simple, often just being 1-5-1-5s or 1-4-5-4 or 2-5-1s. Like, for example, the song Mandinga, which just uses a 1-5-1-5 progression.
Cuban jazz songs take this same rhythm but apply it to slightly more complex chords and chord progressions. For example, the song Con Alma. And that's really the basis of all Afro-Cuban music. It's all about the rhythm. So Afro-Cuban jazz essentially just takes these rhythmic ideas, that is the clave, the montuna, and the tumbao, and applies them to jazz chords and then improvises over the top. So if you want to play a jazz song in an Afro-Cuban style, firstly change the melody so that it adheres to that clave rhythm, either a 2-3 or a 3-2 clave and then play the chords in a montuno rhythm with a tumbao bass part, with all the other instruments playing their own corresponding rhythms if you're playing in a band. And note that this is just the basics. Each of these rhythms that I just discussed um, can be changed and modified and manipulated to create countless variations of this Afro-Cuban rhythm or groove. Each instrument's basic rhythm can be embellished or made more complex. Just like I changed the montuno from a basic montuno to a more complex one. While still maintaining that general rhythm or feel of that basic montuno by again accenting the appropriate beats that correspond with the basic montuno. And also note that the distinction between salsa and Latin jazz isn't completely clear-cut. But generally, salsa is dance music, uses less improvisation, more vocalists, and some complex chords. Whereas Latin jazz is less driving and less danceable, you kind of just want to sit and listen to it. There's more improvisation, it's more instrumental, and it still uses complex chords. And of course, each subgenre of Afro-Cuban music, such as the cha-cha, bomba, rumba, mambo, salsa, um, son montuno, the songo, all, they all have their own particular rhythmic patterns and idiosyncrasies. But that is all I was hoping to cover in this video. Thanks a lot for watching and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks guys, see ya.